I'm feeling like a silly man. Hi everyone, Silly Thinny Silly Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it is time for a review of the new American football self-titled album LP3. Uh, yeah. Another self-titled album from the legendary Illinois emo outfit American Football, who just released the comeback to their 1999 album just a few years ago in 2016, which was also self-titled. I was not a huge fan of the band's return album a few years ago. That's That's been made clear. And I don't think I was the only person who enjoyed American Football's earlier material that was kind of disappointed. The band is known to be mellow, yes, but the sound of this return album was incredibly flaccid, not just in terms of performance, but also just songwriting quality. And like any major band that has put out some good music, takes a break, comes back with a so-so record. I walked away from this album hoping that they would stick with it and just improve down the road. And I think LP3 is actually that improvement. But for sure, American Football, they're not writing barn burners on this one. Still, Mike Kinsella and company do return with a prettier and a fuller sound that I think kind of modernizes the sparkly and euphoric, but also melancholy vibe that American Football is known for. There's actually something so pristine and kind of sterile about the sound of the tracks on this record, it kind of reminds me of the work of Ben Gibbard, whether you're talking about uh, his Postal Service stuff or his years with Death Cab for Cutie after the band kind of made their mainstream transition. There's also a pretty large influx of fairly gorgeous arranged instrumentation thrown into the mix on this thing, like the strings and vocal harmonies and even vibraphones that are worked into the opening track silhouettes. Steve so on drums gives this lush ocean of instrumentation a strong and a crisp rhythmic backbone. I think without it, these tracks would feel kind of blobby. And generally across the entire album, there is a great balance between the sharp percussion on this thing, the rich instrumentation and vocals thrown on top. There are also a few nice changes of pace provided by some guest singers brought into the fold on this album. A few who come from bands who no doubt have been greatly inspired by the early work of American football, whether you're talking about Elizabeth Powell of the band Land of Talk, whose French refrains on the track Every Wave to Ever Rise bring a nice chilly breeze into this track's multi-phased and progressively dreary structure. Toward the back end of this track, there's a lot of repetition. It gently intensifies like a really good classic post-rock song, which is not really surprising considering the band's early work kind of dabbled in that sound, as American Football was definitely not a meat and potatoes emo band. I love even more hearing Haley Williams of Paramore fame on the track Uncomfortably Numb, really the record's most straightforward and catchy tune. Uncomfortably numb. For whatever reason, another moment on the album where Kinsella's incredibly gentle, youthful, light voice reminds me of, of Ben Gibbard's. It's just a weird similarity I can't shake, but still it doesn't impede on my enjoyment. This album also features Rachel Goswell of Slow Dive, whose dreamy and luscious and shoegazy production has no doubt been a huge influence, especially on this new American football album. Her vocal appearance on I Can't Feel You may not exactly be as involved as Haley's, but her gentle and atmospheric and chilly vocals do provide a very nice contrast from the busy and bustling guitars and drums underneath, American football kind of throwing it back once again to the math rock roots that so many fans love about their early work. So the guest appearances and generally the production on this album are pretty good, but really it is the quality songwriting that I think puts LP3 far above LP2. The song Air Apparent is another one of my favorite songs on this thing, which sets the stage with these reverb-soaked, cascading guitar lines, this very sudden and smooth transition into a fantastic chorus, bittersweet in its apology for essentially ending a relationship, and if this fantastic little hook isn't enough, there is this really pretty bunch of group female vocals that are brought into the fold toward the end of the track that sing this pretty haunting mantra about uh, sort of being the heir apparent to a throne, the king of all alone. Now, LP3 does not really overstay its welcome that much at 47 minutes. It is also an eight track album. However, not every one of those tracks, in my opinion, are a highlight. One major downside of this LP, in my opinion, just like LP2, is that occasionally the production on this thing is so dang sterile, clean to the point where it is annoyingly flawless. Some of the guitar soloing and the backing instrumentation on Doom and full bloom sounds like something off of a really bad boomer jazz rock record the kind of album you would love if you just like 
couldn't stop talking about Jeff Beck, and you've invested ten or twenty thousand dollars in a home studio, and yet you've never recorded a single track. And that's just the second half of the song. The first leg is actually some really bland, sparkly elevator rock that I just can't stand. The song Mind to Miss is okay. It's one of the jammier cuts on the entire LP and mostly goes by forgettably in just kind of a breezy fashion. I think it's a track that could stand out a lot more with some added instrumental muscle or maybe a stronger tune. And honestly, on the closing track here, I do find the song to be a little winding. I do think the buildup at the first leg of the track is a bit long-winded. However, I do like the way the very direct and lush string section play very steadily against the mathematical guitars in the mix. There's also a pretty haunting refrain at the end of this track that I think ties up this album's themes of uh, breaking up and loneliness well. Overall, LP3 is a very good album and is the record that LP2 should have been. I'm certainly looking forward to hearing American Football grow past this album and hopefully they pick up a bit of grit in the process, find more ways to I guess vary up the sound of their albums track to track, bring more variety. The dreamy and somewhat shoegazy direction the band is moving in on this one also shows quite a bit of promise. I'm feeling a decent Too Strong 7 on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, American Football, LP3, uh, forever.